A recent Discord question asked if these kind of texts could be created in Resolve, so I created them, and now I'll show you how. So the first step in recreating the text styles was to try and find the font. So I basically took the two uh, images that I had into a photo editing software and just made them solid black characters. If you then go to Google, hit font finder in the search bar and you come up with a whole list of different sites where you can search for fonts. Probably the best is my font. The downside to my font is it is for finding commercial fonts, but you can work around that. Once you've found the font you're looking for, or something similar, then you can, so for example, if I wanted to use TT Muscles Extra Bold, I would type into Google TT Muscles Extra Bold free. And you can generally find a free version of your font. Bear in mind that free versions of the fonts are often demos and are for personal use only. You cannot use them for commercial use. So once you've found your fonts, you install those fonts onto your system and then you come into Resolve. Resolve uses system fonts, so whatever fonts you've got installed on your computer, Resolve can use. Okay, and now we get to the fun bit. The first one is fairly easy and you can pretty much do it on the edit page. So we're trying to get this effect. So if you bring in a text plus node, so go to titles, text plus, and then you need to find the font that you want. In this case, it was a font called the October two. Type your number, make it as big or as small as you want. What I'm going to do just for clarity is put a solid color underneath so you can see what's happening. So back to your text. If you now come to the shading tab and you have various elements, the first four are presets. So you've got solid color or the color of your main text. Then you've got an outline. Then you've got a shadow and finally a border around your text. We're going to use elements one and two, and then we're not going to use three and four, but we're going to use five and maybe six. I can't remember. We'll see as we're going along. So the first thing we're looking at is this gradient. So to get the gradient effect, you can actually do it there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can do it as a, a, an image infusion, or you can do a gradient fill on your actual text. So our gradient starts lightish at the bottom and then goes darker until it abruptly stops about halfway up. So we need our start point to be light. So we can make it a, a gray very pale gray, I suppose. Then we want a midpoint that's a darker gray. Maybe somewhere around there. And then we want this final light. If you drag and click on the little arrow and pull it and watch the gradient in the image, you can see that it gets a sharper and sharper cutoff point. And you can maybe bring the light up so you've got more light area. Play around with the positioning to get the edge and gradient that you want. So you'd end up with something like that. Maybe bring it down a little bit more. Next, we come to outlines. So if we go to element two, which says red outline and check it, to enable it so you get this red outline. We want this outline to be white, like so. And you can drop the thickness. 
And this is where our other elements come in. So ignore three and four, go to five, enable, and come to appearance and select the outline. And I think the next outline was black. So we're going to make this outline black. We're going to bring up the width a little bit. And what we're also going to do is check outside only. And then we're going to go to element six, enable outline, and we'll make this outline blue. And again, we're going to check outside only. And we're going to bring up the width until you end up with a fairly close version of our original image. So that's that one. That one's fairly straightforward. So for the next one, we're going to have to use Fusion, I'm afraid. Uh, but don't worry, it's not too complicated. We bring in a Fusion Comp. And we go into Fusion. Again, we need a text node as our starting point. And as we're in Fusion, I can actually bring this in and just view it so that I've got a reference and I can view everything else in the other side. Put in your number or your character or whatever. And again, we need the right font. For this, I found a font called Redline. Find a font that you like. Up the size. Now, with some fonts, the anchor point is in the middle of the font and for other fonts, it's down the bottom. Don't know why, but... In this case, it's down the bottom, so just come to Layout, and drop the Y value. So I made this in two parts, effectively. So you've got the first part is this white embossed looking two. So we'll do that bit first. To do that, you take your text and you pipe it into a blur node. And then after your blur node, you hit shift and spacebar and you type create ump map. And if we now view our create bump map, we get this. So you can raise the height scale on your create bump map. And then you can select your blur node and slightly increase the blur. And this gives that sort of bevel feel to it. Now, depending on where you want the light and the shadow to be, you may or may not want to add an invert color. It literally does what it says on the tin. It inverts the colors, so it changes where the shadow and the highlights are. Personal choice. What we then need to do is isolate just the text. So to do that, after the invert color we're going to bring in a background and we're going to merge the invert color onto the background node this creates a merge node that gives us a mask input we're now going to take an output from our original text and pipe it into that masked input and now when we view the merge node we've just got our number make sure your background is transparent so you can see we're starting to get something akin to this two, the emboss two. So after you merge node, you can either use a color correction corrector or a brightness contrast, doesn't really make any difference. Both of which are available on your hotbar. You've got your color corrector and you've got your brightness contrast. I'll use brightness contrast, pipe your merge into it, view your brightness contrast, now come to the inspector and drop the saturation to zero. And now you can use the gain to brighten it up. And you're trying to brighten it up so that it's nice and white, but still has the sort of highlights and the shadows to give it the sort of embossed shape. So that's that part done. 
Now we want another copy of our text. What we're going to do, we're going to make an instance copy of our text. An instance copy is an exact copy where all the controls are linked. So if you change one, you'll change the other. To get an instance copy, select your text, hit Control C to copy, click away, and then hit Shift, Control, and V to paste. You can tell you've got an instance copy because they're joined by this green line. And if you look in the inspector, all your numbers have got green boxes around them. Anything with a green box around it is linked. Some settings don't have green boxes around them, but are still linked. So for example, the anchor points are all linked. Everything's linked at the minute. What we need to do is unlink some stuff. So select your instance text, go to the shading tab, and you are going to unlink appearance. So come to appearance, right click and de-instance, that unlinks it. So now you can change the appearance. Let me put my other text in here for a second. You can change the appearance of your instance without changing the appearance of the original text. We are also going to de-instance thickness and we're going to de-instance if you click on red you get the option to de-instance the whole color group so that now lets us change the color of this outline without affecting our original text and we're going to make our outline some sort of shade of red or whatever color you want like so and we're going to increase its thickness like so. Now, if we come back to our original image for comparison, what you can now do is if you take, so you've effectively got two at the minute disconnected fusion comps. You've got this part, which is our white embossed text. And now you've got this part that will come out down here that is our red sort of solid block so to get them together take the output of your brightness contrast and just merge it onto your instance text and now if you view this merge we're at this stage now this has a slight shadow under it we can't use the inbuilt shadow of the text because it doesn't work with the embossing. So what we need to do is just select the brightness contrast, shift space bar and use either shadow or drop shadow as you wish. This gives us our shadow, which is way too deep. So drop the distance. You can maybe up the strength a bit to make it a bit clearer and drop the blur. blur, blur blur to make it a bit sharper and you get something along those lines play with the settings to get what you want going on something like that so now we've got our embossed text and we've got the top outline what we need to do now is build this bit. To build that bit, we're going to select our text instance or instance text, shift space bar and type duplicate. And we get a duplicate node. The duplicate will, as the name suggests, duplicate this layer. So come to your duplicate, Put the number of copies to about 10. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come to the center and this will offset our duplicates like so. So you can make that as deep or as shallow as you want. Again, have a play, do what you think looks good 
So we're going for somewhere around there-ish. At the minute, all our duplicates are the same color, so you don't get this sense of depth. After your duplicate node, add another brightness contrast. And just drop the gain a little. Now, at the minute, that darkens all your copies. So what you need to do is take an output from your original text instance and just merge it onto the brightness contrast. That will bring our original bright outline on top and have our darkened duplicates underneath to give the look that you're after. Finally, this shadow, I suppose you could use outlines to sort of replicate this step shadow, but I don't think it looked very nice. So all I did, this is just so that you can see the shadow. I'm adding a background and merging onto that background. What I did to get the shadow was I use another drop shadow. Like so. And then you've got a nicer looking shadow underneath. So that was basically how I did those two particular examples. Obviously you would pipe out from your merge node to your media out so that you can then go back to your timeline and have your text and you can put it over whatever you want. Like so. Ultimately, what fancy texts you can have are limited by your imagination. That's just two examples. Most sort of text styles or text effects like this can be replicated within Resolve. Anyway, I've rambled on for long enough, so I will take this opportunity to thank you for watching, encourage you to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell, and we will catch you on the next one. Cheers!